Hi. I'm very excited to be skipping class for this. So my name is Isha Kure, and I just want you all to close your eyes and envision a world beyond batteries. This is a little bit hard to do, but it's really as simple as that. Beyond batteries. It is about having the ability to charge a cell phone in less than 30 seconds. It is about being able to drive an electric vehicle for hundreds of miles and stopping to recharge for less than an hour. It's about starting a new future with clean and independent energy. This is the energy storage revolution. So as I mentioned earlier, my name is Isha Kure. I'm a student at Harvard University and the winner of the Young Scientist Award from the Intel International Science and Engineering Fair held this past May. And I'm very, very excited to be here today. So as a typical teenager, I have a cell phone and I would always get frustrated when my cell phone battery would die. How many of you get frustrated? Yeah, many of us. If you don't, then you're very, very patient. So I decided to recognize this problem and go off and do something about it. I turned my frustration into innovation. And in the process, I developed a high-performance supercapacitor energy storage device by developing a novel nanostructure, which can have very good energy storage characteristics. And I know you're all laughing, but yeah. <laughs> uh. So an energy storage device must be able to hold energy. This is a very basic definition. It must be able to charge quickly and absorb the energy, and then later discharge and power that energy to a different device. And so there's three main characteristics for the ideal energy storage device. The first is hold energy, like its definition. The second is it should be able to charge quickly or have a high power density. And the third is that it should have a long lifetime, so be able to charge and discharge for multiple cycles without mechanically degrading or without losing its properties. So currently in mainstream market, we have two main types of technologies. Those are batteries and capacitors. So batteries function through electrochemical reactions and can hold a lot of energy, but take a very long time to charge and have a very short lifetime, like we see with our cell phones. Capacitors, on the other hand, can charge very quickly and have a very long lifetime, but cannot hold as much energy. So we're looking for an intermediate between the two. And recently, what we've seen is the rise of supercapacitors. And supercapacitors function through an intermediate charge storage mechanism using both electro electrochemical reactions as well as an electromagnetic field. So they have a higher energy density than capacitors, so they can hold more energy. And they can also charge much more quickly than traditional batteries and have a much longer lifetime. However, the key problem still in supercapacitor research is increasing the amount of energy they can hold. And so this is the problem that I began to work on. So supercapacitors are actually very well researched and have existed for many years. But what's really interesting is that the reason they're becoming the energy storage device of tomorrow is because of the advent of nanotechnology. Nanotechnology, or technology 10 to the negative 9 meters, thinner than one strand of hair, has allowed us to increase the amount of surface area we have to do chemical reactions. And it also allows for the careful control, manipulation, and design of these supercapacitors to be able to use as the ideal energy storage device. So in my project, I developed a new supercapacitor. You all laughed at the beginning, so I hope it was funny. Um, <laughs> So I developed a new supercapacitor which can charge quickly, hold a lot of energy, and have a very long lifetime. And the way I did this was develop a new combination of materials as well as a new nanostructure. So my material is hydrogenated titanium dioxide polyaniline. And what this is is a metal oxide which is very low cost, easy to produce, and is very stable and a conducting polymer called polyaniline, which can go through many chemical reactions and hold a lot of energy. And the second thing I did was make a new nanostructure. So as you can see on this side, we, well, you, this is a structural image of the nanorods that I've made, and this is really key to why supercapacitors are coming alive today. 
There is so much surface area on these nanostructures. You can just see that. They look like really fine hairs. And this is key to why we see the properties we saw in my new supercapacitor. But this is not just a numbers game. I took it one step beyond that and wanted to see a practical application. After charging my supercapacitor for a very short period of time, I was able to power an LED device for a much longer period of time, which shows the real practical application of this supercapacitor. And what this shows is that with the power of ideas, we can go beyond just the confining box that we are used to. By further developing supercapacitor technology, we can go ahead and start to cross multiple boundaries, initiate a chain reaction to en enable many different technologies to play a larger role in society today. So we've already seen in consumer electronics. Who wouldn't want to have a cell phone that could charge in less than 30 seconds? Not me, and again, I'm very impatient. So that's wonderful to have something that can charge so quickly. And what about a laptop charging in less than one hour? But taking a step even further, even beyond that, in electric vehicles. So electric vehicles currently use battery technology that take a very long time to charge. But supercapacitors will really enable electric vehicles to charge much more quickly. So again, drive for hundreds of miles and stop to charge for only one hour. And also, whenever we break the vehicle, supercapacitors can quickly capture that energy and make it a very efficient process. So again, they can transform the field of electric vehicles. But even one step beyond that, in green energy, such as solar and wind. Solar and wind energy is used in multiple locations, but still not as widely used as it can be today. And the reason is because we lack the efficient technology to capture that energy as best as we can. So having supercapacitor technology that can quickly capture energy and store it for later use by, through solar or wind energy will really make them more feasible and allow us to use them through multiple platforms. So tomorrow, we will be able to charge our cell phone in less than 30 seconds. Tomorrow, we will be able to drive that electric vehicle and stop to charge for only one hour. Tomorrow will be the start of a new future using clean and independent energy. Tomorrow, we will move beyond batteries. Thank you.